Welcome back to another video tutorial from Pilot Training Solutions taken from our private pilot knowledge test prep software. Today we're going to simplify all those questions pertaining to wind indicators such as wind socks and tetrahedrons, therefore the correct traffic pattern and landing direction the pilot should use. Many applicants find these private pilot knowledge test questions to be quite confusing and often end up picking the wrong answer on the test. So, as usual, let us teach you a couple of tricks to guarantee you'll always pick the right answer on the test while on the ground and the correct traffic pattern while in the air. Okay, landing direction and wind indicators. In general, there is various types of wind indicators. With the FA, you're going to deal mainly with two. And if you see figure 50, you can see that that is a tetrahedron. What that is going to do is it's going to align the point of it into the wind. So the reading of that is the exact opposite of a windsock because the point will offer less resistance. That's the part that's going to align itself with the wind. As you can see, the wind in this case is coming straight down runway 22. It's coming from the southwest. So if I had to land at this airport, obviously I can see that 4 and 22 are closed, so I can obviously not land on 22. My best next bet is runway 18. And if I wanted to figure out how to land on runway 18, it's going to be a right traffic pattern. I'll explain this by looking at the next image. If you look at image 51, you can see that the wind is coming from the northwest because the sock will inflate depending on where the wind is coming from. This is a wind sock, it's not a tetrahedron anymore, so you can see it's the exact opposite of what a tetrahedron does. The larger opening of the sock is going to expose itself to the wind. Now, to figure out the traffic pattern here, if you put runways right in the middle of those lines, if you draw out runways right in the middle of those lines and then you extend those lines and draw a traffic pattern like I show you here, you got it. Runway 27, well, I'm making right turns on runway 27. 9, I'm making left turns on 9. I'm making right turns on 18 and I'm making left turns on runway 36. In general, traffic patterns, if it, there's nothing depicted, it will be left traffic because that's the standard traffic pattern for any given airport, left traffic patterns. But sometimes because of either noise abatement or obstacles or some other unforeseen event, the FAA will put a right traffic patterns in some places. And that's why you need to look at that figure there on the ground overfly an airport by at least 500 feet if you're unfamiliar with it or if you don't have any information on it. The traffic patterns are shown on the AFD, they're shown on the charts if they're not standard. It will say RP runway 25 so you have multiple ways of seeing it. But if you don't have any of that, overfly the airport at 500 feet above the traffic pattern and watch for the signs that we just seen. Now place the runways in the middle of those signs and extend the traffic patterns as shown here again by the figure. To enter a traffic pattern, you will want to do this with an angle of 45 degrees to the downwind. So as shown in this line here, your airplane will follow that line there, aiming for the middle of that traffic pattern. Also, you should be at the traffic pattern altitude by the time you enter, so you will start descending as you're coming in on a 45 to that runway. Finally, when departing an airport, the FARs require you to comply with any departure procedure established by the FAA for that airport. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to visit PassFAAExams.com to see how we can help you ace all of your aviation exams, all the while helping you become a much safer and more knowledgeable pilot.